our pace of living leaves us little time for leisure. Our program will give you a chance to experience the fascinating world of traveling, extreme adventures, hunting and fishing. Each week we will take you to the most beautiful places of Kazakhstan. Each nation has its sacred place, the center of their world. There are many confirmations in the history of Turks that the Altai Mountains were such a center of multi-million Turks population. Turk-speaking nations have been known from the 3rd century BC. The first mentioning of a Turk acronym was at the beginning of the 6th century at Altai and referred to a small population that became predominant in Middle Asia with time. While examining the sources and archaeological studies of Altai, we were more interested in artifacts found in Behirsky Barrow on the territory of Kazakhstan and in Pazirsky Barrow in 100 kilometers on the territory of the Russian Federation. Interments in a good state of preservation have given the unique findings to the world. Most of it served as style-forming elements of the major Kazakh national symbols. The place we were heading to was many years ago. Due to changes of the status of this territory, amateur hunting was allowed here just two years ago. Trophy hunting will be allowed next year. We've spent 24 hours, rode 1,600 kilometers, 400 of which were on the road passing the Alpine Mountains. After the completion of all formalities and filling in the forms, we went to the base camp on the riverbank. It is the home to the Taiman that is listed as endangered in the Red Book. As an alternative, grayling fishing is allowed here. Meeting the guides is always an exciting moment, since you don't want to be accompanied by suspicious people. Our first impression was good. We noticed that they are examining us, carefully asking about our horse riding experience and our ability to walk in the mountains. These skills are quite important for hunting the Siberian ibex. We spent the first night in the guest house. We were woken up in the middle of the night by our guides. It was time to go. It was very warm in the guest house and porridge had already been served on the table. Mountain views, as usual, hit the imagination. Moonlit snow peaks rise above our small group. The temperature was minus 15 degrees, but we were ready for such severe conditions. We started moving under the moonlight. I could distinguish our path only during the sunrise. It went along the canyon and was trodden some time ago. In the past, the shepherds' winter huts were here and this means that the slopes are with little snow and provide enough food even for the livestock. Several times we stopped for 10 minutes in order to look around. Once we noticed ibexes on one of the slopes. Our first camp was located close to the old winter hut at flattened shoulder of one of the main ridge spur. 
cedars, larches, fir trees and aspens, as well as moss and cluster berries are main vegetation on the slopes. While studying the slopes with binoculars, we noticed eight ibexes on the rocks. We decided to go up the ridge. It wasn't that easy. We walked more than 10,000 vertical meters on a very complex slope. Thorny bushes blocked our way and sharp stones cut our shoes. Finally, we have reached the top of the ridge. The wind was very strong, it became cold. We have continued climbing up after the rest. Snow drifts made our trip difficult. We saw the herd of 70 Siberian ibexes grazing on the slope, but haven't noticed big male animals. A panoramic view of Altai Mountains was wonderful. It got dark by one and a half hour earlier. We moved to another couloir, which was completely covered with snow. While filming the slope, we noticed movement. These were ibexes carefully moving up the mountain path. The ibexes of Altai subspecies have very interesting winter color. Old male animals have dark heads and white collar necks. We started preparations for the shot. The distance was 390 meters down the slope. We decided that the angle is 30 degrees, so adjusted our position accordingly. We aimed, shot and missed. The ibex was laying on the rock and the bullet passed higher to the right. We understood this by watching how calmly the ibex started moving. The attempts to catch it were useless. Four hours on the horse and nine hours on the feet. And we missed our target. We were very tired and disappointed. Suddenly, the magnificent view of the Biluha mountain, the Turk's sacral place, emerged before our eyes. The image inspired by the Rerich's painting, Victory, came to my mind. The artist painted the epic hero who defeated Dragon at the foot of the Biluha mountain. This painting was drawn in 1942 and was interpreted as the victory of the Soviet nation in the Battle of Moscow. I think the artist put deeper meaning into his painting, taking into consideration the fact that Rerich called Biluha as one of the possible places of the world center having positive energy. Here, every person should overcome their fears, their weaknesses and insecurity. The mountain has come out simultaneously with the sunset. We walked down without using flashlights, guided only by the light of fire. We did not sleep that night. We continued our trip in the morning. Altai horses are very strong and great to ride in the mountains. Sometimes the path's gradient is 40 to 50 degrees plus rock steps of one meter length. But these horses go up and down easily. The second gauche was the spur of the main one. From its dividing range there was a great view over the circus where we hunted earlier. Here we noticed one group of eight ibexes, but no male animals among them. We identified good quantity of the musk deer, judging by the excrements and traces. 
I had never seen this cautious animal alive. The third hunting day was really hard. We saw a very big group of ibexes consisting of 60 animals. Using spyglass, we also saw and the old animals. They were standing a little further on the snow. In a little while, our joy was replaced by concern. We saw small groups of ibexes throughout the slope not less than 100 animals in total. This could make our approach more difficult and the animals were at a long distance from us. We decided to climb up the slope by diagonal to reduce the distance, but as usual, just created more problems to ourselves. At the end, we got stuck near the impassable rocks and had to go back and climb up the mountain at another point. Step by step, we got closer to our aim. The park ranger switched me by the sleeve and pointed to the couple of male ibexes lying on the side. In two minutes, the animals ran away from us. The ibexes have one peculiarity. They always try to find high points for observation. Moving carefully, I measured the distance to the landmarks, each 50 meters. Our ibex appeared above us. We saw just his head and made a shot. The Siberian ibex disappeared behind the rock. One accurate neck shot hit the target. Yerike, my guide, shook my hand. Dressing of the ibex did not take long. I noticed that Altai ibexes have bigger body than Tenchan ones. This fact could be easily explained by the Bergman's principle, according to which the animals of one species which dwell to the north are usually bigger than the ones which dwell to the south. In the evening, we watched more colorful images. This trip will be remembered. Mountain landscapes of eastern Kazakhstan were saved in the memory of members of our group.